Yo, what is up, crew? Oh. What day is it? It's Thursday, agency therapy day. I feel like this week's been a blur, to be honest. It's been kind of wild, wild week, but excited to be here. Excited to run through some agency therapy with you guys today. Uh, if you guys are in the chat, say what's up. Would love to know who's tuning in. If you're from Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, LinkedIn, we're live everywhere right now. We're getting it going. Got the Tylers in the, in, in the group. You know who I haven't seen in a while is Scuba. Where's Scuba been lately? Bo should know. Bo should know. Bo should definitely know. Well, no matter what, I hope you guys are doing well. We're live and in action today. And hey, if we only have a small group today, that's all right. We're still going to bring the action. Uh, Tylers, how does the audio sound okay? Are we doing good? Just want to make sure. Okay, audio is good. I'm, I, for some reason, it says that my connection is horrible, um, but Solid. it seems like it's still going through on your guys' end. So hopefully, you guys are rocking and rolling on your end, and we can jump into it today. So uh, you guys, I posted a little bit about this stream today, talking a little bit about the dark side of SMMA. And normally, we do stuff a little bit more tactical on this stream, but I wanted to kind of give you guys a great path forward because i know there's a lot of a uh, there's a young audience that probably watches the live stream and i want to make sure you guys are in a really good uh mental space when you either start your agency or if you're on the journey of getting your agency ramped up i want to make sure you guys are in the best mental space possible because running an agency i think is uh kind of put forward that it's simple and that it's something that isn't going to take a lot of work and it's a get rich quick type uh, type avenue to take. And it's definitely not the case. Uh, a lot of work, time, effort, uh, skill that is needed uh, in order to run an agency. This is not a, uh, hey, we're going to jump to 10, 20, 50K a month uh, in, in, in a matter of you know six months type of thing. And don't be wrong, there's always exceptions to the rule. And I, and I don't want to be discouraging in any way to anyone that's just getting started in the agency space. But I've I feel like there's some stuff that we should talk about when it comes to getting your agency rolling, what it actually takes to build a successful agency. And I've got some great examples that we'll run through today, but I want you guys on the right path and I want you guys watching and listening the right people uh, that can hopefully show you uh, what it actually takes to have success in the agency space. So my man's crypto. What up, dude? He said, yo, I'm burned out with my agency. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Well, hopefully I can give you some tools and, and tips today that will help you uh, get unburnt out by your agency because the agency model is excellent, man. It's such a good model. It's such a great cash flow model. If you do it the right way, it doesn't have to be constant burnout. It doesn't have to constantly be something that we're stressing out about. Um, and, and really, I wish I would have learned a lot of these things when uh, we started our first agency. And I wish I had a lot of these tools. I wish I had a lot of these resources for when we started the agency because, man, I would have been less stressed. I probably would have hair. Okay. I'd probably have hair right now. Um, if I would have listened to some of the people I'm going to show you today, some of the resources uh, that I'm going to be diving into with you guys today. So thank you for tuning in. Appreciate you guys being here. Let's go ahead and jump into it today. Do a little share screen as always. And if you guys need access to this mural board, if this is your first time here, one, what's up? Hope you guys are doing well. Um, but we use this thing called Miro, M-I-R-O. And I say it every single time on the stream, but it's a great app. Uh, I'm not affiliated by any means. It's absolutely free for, I think, your first board. But uh, I have a shared board that you guys can get access to. It's 100% for free. It's got uh, streams that are aligned with uh, other uh, like kind of like modules that we've gone through in the past. So everything from lead generation to positioning your agency. Uh, there's so many different tools and kits here that you guys can utilize inside of your agency. And so that's where you get it is the Miro board. So if you guys need the link, it is in the chat right now and you can go ahead and grab that uh, and you can access that for free. Uh, make sure you read the rules before you jump in and, and really dive fully into it. But there is a lot of great resources there for you guys. And this is what we teach uh, six, seven, and eight figure agencies on a regular cadence. So if it works for them, if it worked for us, it will work for you as well. So let's do a little share screen. Let's jump into the mural board today. If you guys don't mind while you're here, leave a like, subscribe to the channel as well. If it's your first time here, 
would appreciate it. We do this every Thursday at 7 p.m. And then I think we're going to be doing maybe a little bit more at some point in time around around the stream. There, there's a few more like fun things I want to do with the stream uh, just outside of just agency therapy. I want to I want to do some other stuff as well. I think it'd be pretty fun to have uh, more regular streams throughout the week, more content coming your guys' way. So but let's go ahead and jump into it today. And uh, basically, you know, what we were chatting about today is kind of like the dark side of SMA, the things that people don't really want to talk about. And essentially, there's four dilemmas that we see inside of running a social media marketing agency. Okay, there's four dilemmas. And the first one, and probably the most prevalent one, is the guru dilemma. Okay, the guru dilemma. Now, guys, here's the thing. I'm kind of a guru too, right? Like, I'm on YouTube. I'm teaching you how to run an SMA. Uh, By no means do I want to throw shade at anyone. And the whole goal here is not to talk shit about anyone. But this is a lot of what we see on YouTube currently, right? Your Iman Godsies. And here's the thing. I like Iman. Iman makes a lot of my clients. So uh, it makes me happy that he's around. Okay. These other guys, they make a lot of my clients as well. Because like we work with a lot of seven and eight figure agencies. And those are like ideal clients, uh, are agencies that are more established. Um, But here's the thing. A lot of this stuff is like, you know, step by step, the only way to do SMMA, right? How I signed two, like they make it sound so easy uh, to run an SMMA. And here's the thing is, I think getting your start, um, you know, you you get hyped up and, and things feel easy right at the beginning, but things get drastically more difficult as you continue to scale if you don't have a lot of the right resources in front of you to help you and guide you along the way. So I'm not here to talk shit about these guys. Okay. I think these guys actually do a halfway decent job of like getting you started into social media marketing. But at the end of the day, uh, there's some misconceptions that you might hear across a lot of these channels, a lot across a lot of these gurus. Uh, and here's the thing is this right here. Okay. Is the, the expectations you see on socials are, completely unrealistic. Okay. And essentially what I would ask of you guys is stop watching these SMA gurus. Uh, they're not teaching you how to run a business. Okay. You guys need to learn how to run a business, not just an agency, but a business, good business practice in general. Okay. And seriously, even stop watching me. Okay. Uh, go and consume some of these resources that I'm about to show you that are not me, uh, that are not other social media marketing agency gurus. Okay. It is one track, okay? It is one path uh, for you guys to have success. And so I want you guys to start expanding your scope into what you're watching and reading, okay? Because these guys are showing usually just one thing, which is how to get clients, okay? Majority of these guys that are posting out here, how to get clients for your agency, which is great. That's awesome. Like you need clients for your agency. If you don't have clients, you don't have a business. But there's so many different aspects of the agency that you still need to sharpen, right? And so I want to just point out a few of my favorite resources. These are resources that some of them I had during, uh, well, when we had our agency, um, some of these we didn't have while I had my agency. And these are the ones that I wish I had while I had my agency. So starting at the top here, uh, leadership, okay? If you're going to grow an agency, if you're going to start an agency and actually grow it, you have to have resources around leadership. You have to know how to lead your team. And trust me, if you're 18 years old, if you're 19, 20 years old, I'm sorry, but you don't know the first thing about leadership. It's unfortunate, you know, but at the end of the day, this is a sword that needs to be sharpened on a regular cadence. Uh, One of my favorite uh, leadership podcasts, and I listen to this one on a regular cadence, is Craig Groeschel. He's actually the senior pastor of a a massive church called Life Church. Uh, They have uh, huge campuses all over the country, Uh, but this guy speaks specifically on leadership, and it's so good. It's so good. The resources that he puts together and uh, how how prolific he is specifically on leadership. So, I would recommend if you guys are looking for a great leadership uh, 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 podcast to listen to. If you're trying to get into leadership, if you're trying to be a better leader for your team. This is a great place to start. And then through him, you'll find all of these other gems uh, through Craig Rochelle, like John Maxwell, and um, you know some of the other great uh, leadership authors uh, in this space. But this is an area that is just not talked about often, right? And I don't speak too much on on the leadership side as well because I'm still learning uh, how to how to you know lead my team forward, right? So leadership definitely something that uh, you guys should be taking a look at, especially if you want to grow an agency and you start bringing on teammates. Crypto, uh, 
will you cover systemizing your agency today? No, uh, systemizing, uh, we did part of systemization last week. Um, and we, we talked about onboarding process. Uh, systemization probably will be in a couple weeks, would be my guess, um, as far as like how to build systems specifically for your agency. So that'll be coming up um, relatively soon. I would say in the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll probably chat a little bit more about systemizing your agency. So hopefully that's okay. Hopefully you're not, uh, hopefully that doesn't scare you away from the stream, but we will cover that at some point. Okay. Uh, some other stuff that you guys can dig into here. Dude, I love Nick Terrio. If you guys don't follow Nick Terrio's uh, YouTube channel, he's actually a close friend of mine. Um, but Ecom Facebook ads, if you guys are looking to run Ecom Facebook ads, um, this guy's so great, dude. Like, puts out all this information for free, asks nothing of his community back, um, and just does an excellent job constantly updating you on the latest trends in Ecom. Um, his, his YouTube channel, he puts out... I think like two videos a week right now, man, the dude is just a gem. Um, absolutely like such a, such a freaking great, uh, one, a uh, great YouTuber, uh, but two puts out incredible content that's actually prevalent to today. So if you're trying to learn e-com Facebook ads and, and actually learn, uh, learn that craft itself, Nick Terry is a great place to start with that. Okay. So go check out his channel. Um, give him a, give him a subscribe as well while you're there. Uh, I mean, he puts out some of the best, uh, e-com content out there okay yo what's up zooper good to see you brother nick w it's a common nick w truly uh yes and then of course we got the classic alex from Moses. if you guys are looking for more to like general business but specifically around offer creation this is something that alex does extremely well is offer creation uh we love alex from Moses with some offer creation so check out his stuff man like he's uh, a lot of his old stuff is really good um i'm not saying his new stuff isn't any good but uh it's a little bit more like clickbaity a little mr b style you know um and sometimes like some of the new content i think he's just at this point he's put out so much content that he's just kind of finding new stuff, but he, uh, a lot of his old stuff is very tactical, uh, as far as like, just like general business information. So, um, my favorite is going back to some of his old videos and checking those out, especially around like sales and, uh, lead generation. He's got some really solid ones. So if you guys aren't, um, uh, regularly, uh, watching some, some Hermosi, uh, dude, always a classic, always a classic, um, as far as just general business and offer creation goes. Now, let's talk about scaling a business a little bit, right? Uh, Burn Harnish, uh, one of my favorite uh, authors specifically around scaling business. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the Rockefeller, ha uh, Rockefeller Habits or uh, the book Scaling Up, these are like some of the foundations of how I was able to scale my business was learning about the Rockefeller Habits and specifically, um, you know, the books that Burn Harnish wrote. Um, dude, by the way, if the people you're learning from tell you not to read uh or say they don't read themselves come on now like you can download so much information from these dudes make sure you guys are studying make sure you guys are reading on a regular basis so crucial okay uh you gotta you gotta have great inputs on a regular basis and here's the thing is like if your only inputs are youtube you're just limiting yourself on all the great information there is out there there's been great ceos uh coos that have written incredible books that have come before us and have really laid a lot of great foundation for uh, for people to scale their business without you having to go through the trial and error yourself. So check out Vern Harnish. He's one of my favorite authors. On ops and finance, we got Mike Michalowicz, um, probably my favorite author of all time. Mike Michalowicz uh, wrote books like Clockwork, uh, Profit First. Uh, some of my favorite ones, specifically if you're starting an agency, very uh, applicable to getting your agency started. So if you're looking to systemize your business, um, specifically uh, crypto, if you're wanting to like get the the jump start and systemizing your business, I would check out a little bit of Mike Michalowicz. Uh, incredible author, easy to read books, makes things so digestible. Actually pretty entertaining as well. He's he's a great author. His audiobooks are really good too. If you haven't checked out his audiobooks, would highly recommend uh, uh, checking that out. Yo, Nikita, what's up, dude? Nick Terrio's on the list. Has to be. Has to be, dude. It's so good. He's so good. And, and he's consistent too. So you know you're getting like fresh new information always. Okay. Copywriting, some classics here, the born uh letters, and then as well as our boron letters, as well as cash advertising. Okay. Some just solid ones. If you guys are like just getting your feet wet in the copywriting side of things, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta dig a little deeper there. Hey, you're marketers, right? Even if you're creating content. 
Okay. If you're doing like, or even organic content, uh, you gotta be a good copywriter, right? So at the end of the day, uh, you guys should be diving into copywriting. There's some great examples there, relatively cheap buys on Amazon. If you need them sales, a couple of my favorite guys that I watch on a regular basis here, Cole Gordon, Jordan Stupar, two of my favorite sales, uh, guys in the space currently, uh, just kind of savages, man. Uh, in the space. Now, there are other sales savages in this space that, man, I wish they created content. A couple of my boys, uh, Josh Alltop, Jake Grant, those guys crush it. Corey Jackson um, over at Heman. Like, do I wish these guys were wanted like a little bit more fame, a little bit more clout? Um, because if they started cr creating like YouTube content like these guys are, uh, man, I really wish that people had access to the vat of knowledge that these guys have. Um, but unfortunately, they don't create that con uh, content as regularly. Um, but these guys are great as well. Jordan Stupar, Cole Gordon. If you guys are struggling on the sales side, man, like I, I listen to these guys in the morning when I go to walk, uh, or when I go do my morning walk, they are excellent. And just laying out, uh, just so many, uh, great, uh, sales strategies, objection handling, uh, especially for service-based businesses. Cole Gordon's a great one only because he has, uh, worked in the service-based world for quite a, quite a while now. So a lot of his content is is revolving around that. Same with Jordan. Um, really great uh, 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 two uh, gurus in this space that specifically have sales content. And then if you guys are looking for more like valuation, finance, like I think this is one of the most valuable books out there. Um, the Little Book of Valuation, how to actually value companies. So like if you're ever curious on uh, like uh, valuing your company and, and figuring that out, um, this is a great book. Uh, this is free on Audible, by the way. So you guys can actually get that for free. Um, nice little read. It's a relatively small book. Uh, and then Intelligent Investor. This was a recommendation from Kirchner uh, as well. Uh, he said, read this one. I haven't read this one yet, but any anything that, that Kirchner tells me to read, I'm like, all right, it's putting, it, putting it on the list. Okay. So if you guys are wanting to learn more about valuation, finance, okay, learn more about numbers of the business, okay, great place to start. And then client success, guys, like client success is a part of the business, right? We got to have great client success. Um, uh, this one, customer success is a great one. Then never lose customer again. Left those links there for you guys so you can check those out as well. Now, the whole point of this is we need to broaden our horizons outside of just this stuff, right? How to get clients, right? And, and that's the whole idea behind this. And the guru dilemma is that most of these guys are just teaching you how to get clients. And I'm not saying it's bad, okay? not shitting on these guys. It, 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 it's necessary. Okay. It's necessary to be able to sign clients, but what is also necessary are all of these things, the tactics, the leadership, okay. The offer creations, your ops and finance, copywriting, your ability to sell, uh, your ability to run your business profitably, your ability to have success with your clients, right? All crucial and things that aren't talked about enough when it comes to starting an agency. Everyone thinks it's a game of signing clients when it's really a game of being able to sign a client and then keep them, right? That's the game that we're actually playing. And these are the things that fill in the gaps once you sign the client. So do a little discovery outside of YouTube for just once, okay? No, stay here for the full stream. Don't, don't leave, okay? Don't leave and, and go go uh, go uh, download Vern Harnish's Audible and, and go deep there, okay? Stay here for a minute because I got more to say. Uh, and then you guys can go explore a little bit more outside of that, okay? Let's jump into our second dilemma, okay? The second dilemma is the skill dilemma, okay? The skill dilemma. Everyone type skill in the chat for me. Lisa, stay, okay? Skill dilemma. What's a skill dilemma exactly? Well, really it's the number one reasons, the number one reason why agencies can't get off the ground and it's because they can't deliver a result, okay? And that's the skill dilemma. They can't deliver a result because they don't have the skill set yet. Skilly willy. All right. <laughs> You're wild. Okay. Uh, so it comes back to this, right? Like if you run an e-com Facebook ads, dude, you got to learn to run them. If you're not good at it, I'm not saying like stop selling your service, but you should probably be good at it before you start scaling. Right. So there is a skill dilemma here. There is a skill gap that is needed in order to start and run an agency effectively. If you're starting an agency and you can't deliver the result that you're promising for your client, then you guys shouldn't be running an agency. It's a hard truth, but it's a truth, right? Now, a lot of different ways that we can do this. And, and here's the thing. 
Some of the greatest agency owners I know started as great practitioners and were students of the game before they started their agency. And this might be a gut check for some people. And it's really tough. But I want to pull two examples here. Two of the, the, the best agency owners that I know specifically in the game okay, have been in the game for quite a while now. A lot of us look up to these guys at some point in time. Uh, if you guys don't know, Nick Shackelford um, owns a, an agency called Structured. Uh, I also have a podcast with him, Agency Algorithm. So go check out Agency Algorithm if you guys haven't checked that out yet. But Shaq runs, Shaq runs an eight-figure agency. Okay, that's a big agency. Over a hundred and probably over one hundred and thirty people on staff currently at his agency. But I want to take a second and look at Shaq's background in order to show you the time and effort it's actually taken to get to the skill set and to get to where he's at today. Because timeline, something that we're going to talk about, that's one of the other dilemmas that we're going to talk about. But I want to show you specifically timeline in this, but also this, the, the skill set that was actually built throughout his career. So I pulled this from his LinkedIn. Three years of working for other people while running his own agency, right? So down here, he had, uh, uh, you know, some experience here. It doesn't seem like very long. Um, global social coordinator, right? So probably got to start with that. Uh, he was a co-founder of Fidgetly. So if you guys are, aren't familiar, uh, familiar with this, uh, Shaq and his partner, um, Jake Schmidt, uh, who now run the agency together, uh, started uh, started something called Fidgetly, uh, which is fidget spinners. Uh, they were actually the ones that kind of introduced fidget spinners to the online space and uh, kind of made it kind of made it famous. Uh, that was that was them. Uh, and then from there, he was a senior digital strategist at at an agency. And then this is where he got his big experience right here: director of paid strategy, senior digital strategist over at Common Thread Collective. You guys aren't familiar with Common Thread Collective, one of the OGs in the space when it comes to digital marketing. Uh, I mean, these guys have been uh, have been massive for a very long time uh, and, and are known for creating some of the best uh, some of the best entrepreneurs out of their ecosystem, right? You got people like Savannah Sanchez uh, that have come out of there as well. Uh, a lot of great entrepreneurs have been bred from Common Thread Collective. But here's the thing, three years of other working experience before he really went full-time into his agency. And then check this out. Okay. Nine years, nine years of experience running structured before getting to eight figures. Okay. So experience, skill, learning from outside places, and then bringing it into his own agency. That's the point that I want to get across here. Now we can also look at someone like Ashton. Okay, Ashton Shanks. If you guys aren't familiar with Ashton, runs an agency called Heman, uh, Heman Group, Heman Media, Heman X. Okay, he's got a lot of a lot of different companies going on right now. But I, w I just want to show you this this path because I think it's really important to understand uh, the timelines here as well as the experience gained. So I actually started in 2011. I'm pretty sure he started right out of high school because Ashton's a little bit younger than me, and I graduated high school in 2010. So I think he's actually a year younger than me. Uh, so he started right out of high school straight into director of marketing for Flash Technologies. And then over into Lampstand, uh, was a creative director over at one of the churches that he worked at. And then moving on to a little bit further experience, media buyer and digital marketing consultant, and then digital marketing manager, right? All of this through 2011, all the way through 2020. And then in 2018, okay, he got that one shot, okay? All this experience leading up, boom, into his breakthrough year. So seven years working for others until he got his breakthrough over at Traffic and Funnels. And if you guys aren't familiar with Traffic and Funnels, massive consultancy um, led by Taylor Welch. And he was the director of advertising there. He actually started as an intern and then got an opportunity to move into the director of advertising. Then eventually he uh, became the CEO of that, that business. But this is where he gained a ton of knowledge and uh, developed as a marketer, right? In all of these years, right? So seven years working for others until he got this opportunity. And then 2020, he started his own agency. And he's been running that for three years now. Okay. Look at all the skill that he was able to develop through his through his timeline, right? Through his uh, working environments. And for a lot of you guys, you're jumping into your first business, first time, without any previous working experience. And I'm not saying it's impossible, 
right? And, and this little line here <laughs> draws us all the way over here. I'm not saying it's impossible uh, to just start an agency and like get ramped up. It's just harder without the working background, right? And so this is the one point that I really want to get across today is that you don't necessarily need to have all of this experience to start an agency. You can start an agency whenever you want. But I'm just saying, look at all of this previous background that these guys were able to collect before actually getting their agency started. Had great mentors, practiced, practiced, and practiced diligently until they started their own agency and before their agency was even successful. And so the whole point here is skills are key. And if you don't have the skills, you need to go somewhere that you can hopefully go learn those skills because your time delay, you're going to spend way more time and you're going to get frustrated and you might even give up, right? You, there's going to be a bigger time delay for you to learn those skills by yourself versus having someone teach you. Whether that's going to get your internship, whether that is going to work for someone until you can get to the point where you're like, hey, I'm confident I can do this by myself. So the skill dilemma, got to have the skill set. If you don't have the skill set, I would recommend finding someone that will teach you the skill set. And a lot of times, in my opinion, the YouTube videos, the courses, it's just not enough. You need the hands-on experience of like actually working for someone, working for a great entrepreneur, working for a great CEO. And that's what these guys had. And that's what, that's what I had. So it kind of gives you an idea of their path and how they've become successful and how it's a little bit slower than what you may have thought. Which leads me to the speed dilemma, which is around the timeline. Okay. And as you can tell from above, some of the top agency owners, they've been in they've been in the game for a minute, for a while, right? So yes, you, you gotta set yourself some real realistic expectations. You should be expecting, you know, eight to nine years in the game before you get your true traction, right? Before you really hit the thing that actually works well for you. Whether that's working for other people and then you start your agency, you know, for us, like we've been running this consultancy for a little bit over two years now. Um, and this will be our first year going over a million dollars, right? For, for one year, which is totally fine, right? You need to set realistic expectations for yourself. And I'm not saying it's impossible to exceed those expectations. You might catch a wave and catch wind with a certain offer, and a certain service that really works well for you, that happens. But it doesn't happen for everybody. And I would say it happens to the few, which is okay. But you have to have those realistic expectations for yourself. And we all love a solid revenue goal, but it probably shouldn't be the first, the first goal you set. The first goal you should set should probably be to deliver great results for your clients. Because if you deliver great results for your clients, then you're going to be able to stack revenue. Right? And you're going to be able to have success with your clients and then they're going to stay with you long term. It's going to be easier for you to sign new clients. Okay, The best strategy around your lead generation, getting new clients, is delivering great results for the clients you already have. If you deliver great re uh, client results for them, then you're never going to have to worry about signing new clients. I promise you. Because these guys are a testament to that. Now, Shaq has barely run many paid ads for his business. Um, uh, I think they're getting into it now. But did great work, signed a lot of clients, signed a lot of big clients. Ashton, hey, does great work, signs a lot of big clients. Now, Ashton runs a lot of paid ads now, so I can't say that that's true uh, of him. He puts out a lot of content as well. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, when he first got started, he just did great work. And so he got great clients. So the skill gap, okay, the skill dilemma and the speed dilemma and setting realistic goals for yourself is extremely important. And so remember, great client results will equal increases in revenue and uh, the easiest and uh, the hardest lever to pull. Okay. And what do we mean by that exactly? The easiest and hardest lever to pull? Well, it's the easiest lever to pull because these are clients that we already have, right? But it's the hardest lever to pull because sometimes it's hard to get great client results. So, with that being said, uh, you know, if you deliver great results for your clients, guys, uh, you're going to see increases in revenue because great results mean that your clients don't leave you and you're not always hunting new deals. So if this is the case, then you need to go back up here to gain the skill set. Hopefully that's making sense so far. Okay. Next thing is speed like simplicity. Okay. So if you guys are wanting to go fast, you want to get into that first million dollar month, 
Well, here's the thing. I would recommend choosing one niche, one offer, and then scaling it to a million. Drown out every other distraction in business venture and every opportunity that comes your way because it is just going to be a distraction for you getting to your first million dollars. So if that's the goal, and I feel like every entrepreneur wants to get to a million dollars at some point per year, well, you have to drown out your distractions. You're going to have a lot of opportunities that come your way. And I see this all the time with young entrepreneurs. I did it when I was young. Okay. Idea fairy comes in and distracts us from the main thing. Stay on path, stay on your one thing, make it great, make it the best in the marketplace and people will buy it. That's how it goes. So don't get distracted. Okay. If you get distracted, okay, you will not scale as quickly. One niche, one offer, scale to a million. Speed like simplicity. And then lastly, give yourself a big enough time horizon. Time horizon is huge, guys. Uh, I've been building this craft for almost 10 years now. And just now starting to see some success, right? And here's the thing is I've, I've only been running my own business for about two years. Uh, I worked for other people for about almost eight years, seven years, okay? Because I'm, I'm in it about nine years, a little bit over nine years now. So I've worked for other people for seven years before I even started my own business. And once again, not saying it's the only way to do it. Some of you guys are very entrepreneurial minded, which is totally fine. But this shit takes a little bit of time. And for me, I gained a ton of knowledge. And I, when I started this business, I got to skip out on so many, uh, so many problems and, and so many things that I've learned from other businesses that I didn't have to face in starting my own business. So you got to build the craft, okay? But here's the thing. If you spend some time with other people that have done it before and are a little bit ahead of you, it's just going to take a little bit a little bit less time. That's the truth. And if you're not willing to put in the time, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend being a business owner because this shit sucks for quite a few years, okay? And obviously, you know, for the first year, it sucked for us. Like it was brutal the first year. But after that, it got a little bit easier. But we had the experience, right? We had the experience coming into it, knowing what we had to do in order to start to have success. Okay. Once again, not this is not everybody's timeline. Some people can have success really quickly. It happens. It happens. It truly does. But I would say the majority do not have success that quickly. And that's just part of the game. You just have to understand that. So don't be frustrated with yourself. It's just part of the game. Some of us have a longer time horizon than others. Cool. All right, we got one more. Hopefully you guys are still with me here. Thank you for being diligent today. The last thing is the proximity dilemma. Okay. And this is the fun one, in my opinion. This is the fun one to fix. The proximity dilemma. And if we want to go slightly faster, proximity to other successful people actually helps with this. So if you're wanting to go faster, surround yourself with great people. Okay. There's a couple different options that you can do. Okay. I've got events, masterminds, speaking gigs, events, industry events to network with other agency owners, to, with people inside of your niche, build genuine relationships with people. This is something that I did from the get. This is something that we did in almost all of our businesses. We were always getting in the right room. And I've always had this quote down here, get in the right room, right? But these relationships will help carry you, okay? Uh, every event that I've ever gone to, there's been an ROI in some shape or form from it. And of course, you have to go to the right events, okay? But here's the thing is you meet the one right connection, you get the one golden nugget that will change your business forever. That's the power of going to events. Same thing with masterminds, okay? <laughs> when I started my business, I remember paying, uh, I paid $40,000 for my first mastermind. I put it on my credit card. Not all forty thousand dollars. I I got a payment plan. Luckily, luckily, I think it was like over five thousand dollars a month that I was paying for a mastermind. Um, it was more than my rent. Uh, my business at the time was making mm, like maybe twenty k a month, maybe twenty k a month, something like that. And I remember investing in this mastermind. I was like, damn, this is a quarter of what my business generates. Every single month. I also have to pay an employee and I also have to pay myself so I can eat and, and pay rent and all that stuff. Right. So I'm like, dang, like there's not a lot of margin for error here. Uh, but masterminds are a great place to learn a lot of new skills, build great relationships, get connected with people. Uh, one of the, ma the mastermind that I joined, I was able to create the offer 
that now has gotten us, uh, we're very close to, the, to that seven figure run rate. Um, you know, these masterminds allowed you to uh, get connected with the right people. We've sent clients from the mastermind that we were in kind of wild. Uh, so these places like, yeah, it's expensive. Yeah. It's a little, you know, woo wooey, but it's worth it. Well worth it. Okay. And then lastly, we have speaking gigs. Okay. Now here's the thing. You, you, you just don't get to go up on stage. That's just, that's not how it works. Unfortunately, I wish it was. It's just like, you just get invited to events all of a sudden. That'd be magical. Uh, but I started with podcasts. That's a really great way to get started. Um, and you can just post on your socials that like you're in search of, uh, getting on two to three podcasts over the next quarter. Um, and, and you'll actually be very surprised people will invite you on their podcast. And I'm, I do, I do every podcast that people invite me to. I haven't posted in a while. Maybe I'll make a little post this weekend on jumping on podcasts. But when people ask me, I get on, I don't care how small it is. I'm going to get on a podcast because I don't know what it's going to lead to. And I did one podcast for this random dude. Uh, his name was Colin Castrini. He said, Hey, my dad has a podcast and we'd love you to, uh, to come on. We, we like the content that you post. Um, you know, uh, I specifically helped this dude in the DMS a few times. And he's like, I want you to come on my dad's podcast named Sean Castrina. And I hopped on Sean's podcast. It's like the five minute entrepreneur or something like that. Uh, and the five minute entrepreneur, and he would just interview me for five minutes. It was a five minute podcast. And that was it. And a couple of months later, after we posted the podcast and all that, and it, it wasn't anything crazy. Like it didn't go off for like a ton of views. Like I'm not extremely well known or anything, but after uh, a few of uh, a few months after that podcast went live, uh, I get a call from, from Colin once again. And he goes, Hey man, we're like, we're hosting an event here in Miami and Bradley and my dad are going to be hosting the event together. Would, would you like to come speak about systems and operations? And I was like, sure. I was like, let's do it. I was like, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm going to speak on, but let's go. Let's, let's run it. And so, uh, yeah, one of my first speaking opportunities was in front of 300 people in Miami uh, with Bradley and Sean and all of these guys. And I, I wore my Crocs and my hoodie, and it was epic. Uh, and, and it was a great experience for me. But all of that came from a podcast and just jumping on random people's podcasts, right? It was at the Miami Hilton, which if you guys ever host an event, don't, don't host it at the Miami Hilton. Let me tell you, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Uh, much love to Sean and Colin. I love those guys. They're great dudes. Uh, but here's the thing. Um, you guys, if you want to get some speaking gigs, podcasts are a great way to get there. Uh, and then doing great podcasts will eventually lead to that speaking gig. Okay. So, this, all of this, proximity, getting in the right rooms, meeting the right people, and then eventually you get to do pretty cool stuff. Okay? And it's kind of the game you have to play. And if you ask a lot of these entrepreneurs um, that are in this space, there is a certain game that you have to play. And you don't necessarily have to play the game, but it's a lot easier if you do. And you get connected with the right people that can you know, eventually introduce you to new clients. They can help you unlock certain problems that you're having in in your agency that you may have faced before, but you have to be in proximity and you have to be in the right rooms. It's kind of part of the game. And so two years of consistency of me paying thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars to get in the right rooms for masterminds, events. I got speaking gigs and I got a podcast with one of the most successful agency owners. Okay. All because I showed up in the right rooms and I carried myself well, right? Well, what was this? 2022, April 29th. There it is. There's, there's the lineup. Devin Johnson, that dude's a gangster. Uh, but Brad Lee, like that's crazy, man. Right. And, and this was from Bo Harrelson's event over here. Right. But this one came from a mastermind. This one came from just jumping on people's podcasts. This one came from attending a geek out event. But it doesn't happen without showing up. So here's the thing. If you guys aren't getting in proximity, it's going to be a little bit tougher. So show up, get in the right rooms. And that's it. Those are the four dilemmas. That's kind of the dark side of running an agency. I know it was kind of low key today. I know it wasn't extremely tactical on like information that's going to help you necessarily grow. But 
these are the things that I did in order to get where I'm at. And these are the people I listen to in order to build the agency that I built and now the consultancy that I'm building. This is the path of people that have, have done what you're probably trying to do. And this is the path that they've taken. We understand that we need to hopefully broaden our time horizons just a little bit and that we need to get in the right rooms and we need to be in close proximity to people who are great. And that's my pitch for tonight. Hopefully that was good. What do you guys got for me today? A little bit lower viewership today, but that's okay. Much love, much love to everyone. Thank you for, for whoever showed up. Crypto, I don't know if you're still here. Nikita, what's good? Zuper. If you guys got questions, you can drop them in the chat. Uh, we'll make this live for you guys um, in here as well. I need to drop last week's video. Uh, going through some of the old stuff here. Okay, we got a little onboarding clients from last week. So if you guys missed last week's, go check that out. Uh, really great onboarding system for you guys uh, that will help uh, make sure that your client success gets off on the right foot. If you guys are looking to land clients on LinkedIn, okay, we have the whole lead gen system right here. Cop copy and paste, okay? That's all you have to do. Take this exact system. This books us 7 to 12 book calls per month, uh, which is great, okay? Qualified leads right to your door. Uh, pricing strategies, offers, okay? <laughs> Whatever you need, it's all here. And then uh, eventually we'll do systems. Eventually we'll do systems as well. So keep tuning in. If you guys have questions, you can always drop them in chat or um, here, I'll even do this. Let's let's do this right here. Let's drop a little sticky note. Questions? Up them here. And then you guys can drop questions. If you guys have questions on the Miro board, you drop them in here and I'll answer them for you. Okay, we'll put some sticky notes in here. Okay. Give you guys some space. If you got them, just put them on these other separate sticky notes. Oh, well, see any questions coming in. Um, Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your Thursday. Thank you for attending a little agency therapy with us today. Uh, we'll be back next week, 7 p.m. Central Time. I'll put up the link a little bit sooner. Last time, I, I, I was a little slow on it this week. That's probably why not as many people came. That's okay. Uh, you guys can watch the replay. Uh, if you guys are interested in coming to an awesome agency event, top left here, Hydra Council. Scan that QR code. It's been sitting up there all stream. Go check it out. Uh, we'll be here in Nashville, April 28th and 29th with some awesome agency operators teach you how to run an agency the appropriate way much love guys don't forget like subscribe and we'll see you at the next one peace